It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The Italian Prime Minister, Matteo Renzi, is expected to resign from his governing center-left Democratic Party on Sunday. His announcement came just after the crushing defeat of a referendum for constitutional reforms that he had proposed, which miserably failed on Sunday. While campaigning for the yes vote, he threatened to resign if the referendum was not passed. Now joining us to discuss the situation is Luciana Castellina. She has been a leading figure of the Italian left since the 1960s. She was a member of the European Parliament from 1979 to 1999, and she is a founding member of several communist parties in Italy, and she's now a journalist. Thank you so much for joining us, Luciana. Yes, I am also the honorary president of one of the largest organizations which sponsored the no at this referendum, which is ARCI, which is the main lazy uh, social and cultural association of the country. Luciana, let's start with some basics here, because not everyone uh, all over the world is following the details of this referendum uh, that was proposed by uh, the Prime Minister Renzi. Give us a, uh, some context. What is this referendum about? Well, you know, I think that abroad uh, the whole story has been uh, told in such a way that uh, there was a total misunderstanding. This is the reason why I keep receiving telephone calls and emails from abroad saying, oh my God, why did you join uh, the front of Trump? Just as if no was uh, represented by groups uh, like Trump. Uh, uh, I think I told you about my organization, Archie, which is very large, the biggest organization in the country. But I should tell you that uh, the trade unions, the main trade union, CGL, which has four and a half million members, supported and fought for nine. And that the ANPI, which is the association of the partisans, uh, the one who fought against the Nazi fascists uh, and who were at the beginning of this constitution, they also fought for the nine. So Trump is the Matteo Renzi eventually, not us, you know, it's exactly the opposite. But I, I don't know what happened, you know, the prime minister, the new president of Austria, we were all so happy that he was elected, the van den Bellen. The first thing he said is, I hope that Renzi will win. And he doesn't understand it. It is the opposite of him, you know. So what shall we do? Well, are the final results in, and do we know for sure that the referendum has failed? Oh, there is 20 percent uh, difference, you know. And, and uh, it is something which is, of course, very interesting to see that uh, um, in only a few provinces, uh, the uh, yes uh, was over the no. And these are the richest parties of the country. So all over uh, where you have, and young people, the majority of the young people voted for no. So it's the opposite of Renzi said, because Renzi presented himself as the one who wanted finally to make Italy modern against the old people who were attached to the no, no, what. And instead, the large majority of the young people voted against this, his proposition. Exactly the opposite. And what, what was it that the young people were voting against? What had the prime minister proposed to do through the referendum? Well, you know, I mean, it's not just an... I think that people should understand that this is not just an Italian affair. It is a long time that there is the tendency of uh, saying that uh, economic policy, politics has become too complicated with globalization, and it is uh, much better uh, to... that there is too much democracy, that this is too slow, that we have to give more power to the executive and reduce uh, the powers of uh, the democratic institutions which are foreseen by our constitution. This is the whole story uh, about uh, what's happening, you know. And the proposal of Renzi was precisely this. And he said this clearly. With globalization, we have to go faster, and we cannot yet we cannot uh, uh, have so much democracy. Which democracy is slow, as you know, and this is a guarantee in some way. In some way, but you know, this is a long story. You remember the trilateral Rockefeller and Kissinger, 1973, and their manifesto from Tokyo when they said, 
oh my God, there is too much democracy in the world. We cannot stand it. The system cannot stand it. And we economic policy can no longer be given to politics and parliament. It has to be given to uh, experts, you know. And this is uh, more and more decisions are taken on a private level uh, by agreements, commercial agreements uh, uh, on the global field, and parliaments have less and less uh, real powers. So what Renzi wanted to do is uh, how to institutionalize this change, but this change is not just in Italy. It's going on all over, and I think we should take care of it. Uh, Luciana, some people argued that the no vote is really a victory for the anti-establishment parties as well as the Eurosceptic far-right parties. Do you agree with that assessment? But no, you know, the right party. I mean, in this no, there are all the right-wing forces, but these are not the leading forces, you know. The leading forces have been the social organizations which have been taking a position against the referendum. I, call, I tell you again, uh, the the trade unions, uh, I mean, in, in Italy, the trade unions are a very strong organization, very important. Uh, and uh, so it's a lot of young uh, as networks of young of the students and so on. You know, well, uh, the establishment in Italy, I mean, in, in, we have in government those who want to no longer give space to these uh, forces. Uh, and uh, produce what democracy should produce, the possibility to uh, uh, have a dialectic in the parliament and to not to give all the power to the prime minister, you know. This is democracy. And But, you know, I mean, there is something which is very really clarifying. G.P. Morgan sent a message at the eve of, of the vote saying that it was time to abolish these constitutions of South Europe, which have given to much power to the people and to politics. That's a, the whole game, you see. So, and it's also not true that uh, the forces which fought for the nine are against Europe. They are not at all. Of course, they are very critical to the European politics, uh, austerity and uh, no, no, no longer any kind of democracy, but not against Europe, not at all. Luciana, the Five Star Movement and the Northern League was very much credited uh, with campaigning against the referendum and against Renzi himself, um, and that had a lot to do with the referendum being defeated. So who are these people uh, that uh, is a part of the Five Star Movement and the Northern League? This, too, is wrong, the way it has been presented abroad. Uh, the Five Star Movement, I don't love it because it's very confused. Uh, it's a lot of young people who have just approached politics uh, with very little culture and very little experience. Uh, it is uh, led by, uh, you know, just an actor who is a comic, I mean, uh, who is really not a significant person. But um, in the movement, there are a lot of uh, uh, young, nice people who are not at all like Trump were not right-wing, not populist in the sense that uh, they talk against migrants or that they talk uh, uh, against democracy. This is wrong. So uh, it, they, have, they speak so much about the five stars because they want to present the threat that if the no, if we go to the elections, then there will be people who don't know how to rule, you know. But uh, I mean, one has to uh, reduce the idea of the danger. This is a movement which uh, has to make its experiences, uh, and uh, it will change, certainly change very much, uh, and it's not a risk, it's not a danger. And we have lost connection with uh, Lucianes, so thank you so much for joining us on The Real News Network.